Hello everybody. I'd like to spend a little time today talking about 3D Compose, which is the visual part of the 3D product architect. You know, it's one of the great values of this tool is the ability to position parts, you know, relative, you know, without using a CAD tool. And you can position relative to each other and you can also do freeform positioning. I'd like to look at just how you, these can be done with the system. In specific, there's really three uh, useful points I want to touch on. First is the ability to position with coordinate systems. Secondly, positioning with the robot. And lastly, using uh, selection groups, uh, pre persistent groups you can establish while you're working. So let's dive right into an example here. Here we got just a, a set of parts out here, uh, initially brand new session. And without doing anything, we can simply drag parts. And as we drag them, you notice they're snapping into position. What they're doing is positioning themselves in parallel and aligned with the coordinate system of the other component we're touching. Now, in some cases, this could be useful. Say, for example, with a cylinder here, I align two cylinders quickly by aligning their coordinate systems and then get them relative to where I want them to go. But I find in general that this type of method is not necessarily that useful. Uh, it's more useful to use the robot. Now, the robot, if we can drag it on the screen, we can drop it onto faces. Uh, we can drop it onto cylinders. It aligns with those, as you can see. And wherever we, wherever we drop it, we'll align with that type of shapes. And you'll notice here that uh, briefly there's some filters we'll talk about in a moment to decide where we're aligning to. Now, when we align it to a face, we can then drag that element, of course. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only thing we can move with that particular alignment. Whichever selection we make, we can then use that position local coordinate system to move that particular um, component that's in the selection. So the initial element really doesn't really have, it doesn't force us to relocate the coordinate system, just establish its orientation. Now, this also extends other things we can do, of course, besides translation, we can do rotation. And any kind of movement we make, we can also establish a specific value just by clicking on it here in 322 degrees, and it'll set it to that specific value. So we can, we can fine tune and position geometry fairly well with the robot just to get things in relative location. But once again, we're dealing with the discrete parts, which may not always be useful. This is where that third entity comes in, the selection group. So when we select an element, you'll notice uh, the orange outline box, which is, uh, gives us an outline of what is in, in defined in this group. Well, we might want to change that and expand it. By selecting the selector here, we can then just go through and, and work our way up the particular branch of an assembly tree and establish a better group. So now we have this wider group. We can do the same over here. We'll grab a number of these components and now establish their group such that when we touch the orange box, we can see the various groups that are persistent for this particular session. Of course, independent items still have their own selection boxes just for their discrete selection. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And if we drag this over now and we do any kind of movement to any of these that are part of the selection group, and we set our filters accordingly. I like to use a cylinder and a surface and a, and a circle. I find those are the most useful ones to turn on. I don't like everything turned on. It gets very difficult to select. So now I can use the cylinder to quickly do a kinematic snap, which is really a third type of positioning, and combine it with the robotic move. So since the particular structure is still established, I can then use the robot to drag and position it further. Anytime while I'm working on something in session, I can relocate the robot. And you'll notice none of this has been saved yet up at the top. I can always cancel. So I'll position on this other cylinder or sphere. And once I establish it there, since I still have my selection group, I can then move and rotate this structure in any position I want, manually or by typing in a value. And I'll OK this to establish this and save this persistent for this session. I should say persistently and save it. And I'll move this other part out of the way. Hopefully this just gives you, I just want to give you a sense of how you can work with the robot, random positioning, and, and selection groups. I hope this was useful information.